So I basically said to myself, you and I, Britt, we're going to be in this container for a whole year. And I was. For 365 days in a row, I did not leave that container. And I worked every opening hour. So till two in the morning, you name it. How close did you live by? Or did you actually literally? (laughs) I literally lived 40 minutes away. Oh, whoa. So sometimes I would sleep there. Like my turnaround on my shift was so short. Yeah. Like I would finish up uh, like a Saturday night. And then I would basically have to be back there at nine in the morning. Finish the Saturday night at like two, three in the morning. I'd clean till like four or five. I'm obsessively cleaning. And then I'd have to go run errands and pick stuff up before I got to work anyways. Take a quick nap, go to work. Like I was working crazy hours. And it was through proving that to them that I then learnt to manage. Welcome to The Sevo Show. We are here joined by Brittany Garber. She owns founder over everything pretzel overlord of Perth. <laughs> she also has voodoo coffee and a few others. What yeah, are they? Yeah, I've got Chubby Boy um, and also Voodoo Priestess. Nice. Which is their sister companies to Voodoo. And just for some context, if if it may be so rude of me to ask, mm-hmm. uh, how old are you so far? I'm 29, 29. just turned 29. 29. Yeah. And, you have, <laughs> and you have all these businesses. Yeah. yeah. And... Do you love what you do? Um, nah, 90% of the time, yes. I don't think it's possible to love what you do in like the generic sense always. Yes. But I love what I do, yes. Yes. You sort wake of. up every day and you're stoked. Uh, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. Um, no, nah, no, like, but in general, like I kind of live by this like theory that like if I am going to be having a bad time, it's super refreshing and like kind of satisfying to know that I did that to me. And like therein lies the satisfy. Yeah. So like you if, control the stress. Yeah. Well, and if I'm having a crap week, it's not like anyone else in the world did that to me. I had the freedom to choose to put myself in a situation where, yeah, I've overloaded myself or there's too much stress going on or whatever, but no one's forcing me to do that. And that's like the bottom line that makes it a great job. Amazing. That I love because I'm the one, I'm the one doing it. Exactly. So how did you come about from when you finished high school to where you are now? Let's start from the beginning. You're oh, local? Uh, yeah. So I'm, well, I'm an immigrant, so I'm from South Africa initially. There it is. Yeah. There so it is. Hardworking people. We are <laughs> kind of assholes too sometimes, but <laughs> somewhere in between there. I'm Russian myself. Ah, yeah, so no. So we're all immigrants coming in and taking everybody's business and jobs. Look, yeah. Well, I mean, South Africa has a very funny um, statistic. Like we are – per capita on the planet, one of the highest producing countries of entrepreneurs. Because generally speaking, you kind of have to make things happen for yourself. It's it's not lent to you, given to you, inherited. That's not really how that works. So we're very resourceful people and my family's very resourceful, like just my immediate family's here. But like you watch that as a kid and I've always been like, like my, one of my favourite things to do, you speak, count $2 coins. So like clearly I've always enjoyed some aspect of business and I used to write contracts for my brother to be nice to me like all kinds of things but um I've always been super creative too like as a kid so I sort of went that direction because it was quite obvious um and then graduated from high school um and I got a scholarship to go to Curtin so I did creative advertising graphic design photography and illustration it's a double degree uh can't draw to save my life though Same. That, but My mum's an artist, but I can't do it. Mm-mm, so no. I was like, photography for me. Honestly, me too. Yeah. So I was like, that makes more sense to me. And I can like, I can make a thing happen in person, but can I draw it? No. No, stick <laughs> figures only. I mean, literally. Yeah. Um, so I used to like find images off Google mm. and put them all together in Photoshop and then trace that. So it was like a hybrid Frankenstein of what I needed and then traced on top. So that's how I drew Um, but yeah, then I graduated, I did a ton of freelancing work in photography and graphic design and like all of that. Um, cause I love the business aspect of it. I love doing, you know, my own thing and that sort of seemed to be the best way to do it. Um, but I just started, I suppose like I'd start a lot of things and never finish them. And it was, yeah, becoming like an issue. Like every five minutes I'm bored. I want to do a new thing, a new business. And then I pick up a hobby. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make pillows today. But then I'm like, oh, I could sell the pillows. Like it always ended in business. Did you end up like fit like that pillow thing, for example, did you end up 
completing that line or did you get yeah. bored before the, the, the complete? Always got bored before the complete. Okay. Always. And okay. I have ADHD. And I yep. Went, yeah. So there like, it is. generally speaking, a thousand hobbies. It's a meme, isn't it now? Oh yeah. But like, I mean, reasonably speaking, like I got diagnosed as a, an adult. So, um, but when I walked in there, well, besides the fact that I walked in, I had, I was clamping my like parking ticket. And I like opened it and I was like, excuse me, sir, do you mind if I quickly run down? I forgot to put this in the car. And I forgot my keys in like the lobby. And he was like, babe, don't stress about it. You definitely have ADHD. Like we don't really even need to discuss. See you later, don't worry about billing you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, thank you. Um, but like I love like the energy works for me. Like it always has. Um, but I suppose like because nothing ever finished, I sort of put myself in a position to have to finish. And that was pretzel. So it was like $100,000, which I'd earned over freelancing the years before. So you saved it up? Yeah. Self-made yeah. queen. Every single penny. That's the hustle. Yeah. And like, I mean, the funny part is that some of the money that went into my pretzel, I earned working at a pretzel, like at Wetzel's Pretzels when I was a kid. I was getting like $7 an hour and like some of that money went into this pretzel. So you've been a, a like a, a saver, like completely just... Oh, 100%. So what's your saving strategy since you were a kid for, oh. the, for the young'uns listening? Oh, look, I can't say – well, I wouldn't say it out loud, bearing in mind what I do for a living. Yeah, yeah. But no coffee, piece of toast. So you, like, don't want to not be a part of things. Flask. You know what I mean? Work it out. So I'd go to breakfast. All my friends were having stacks of pancakes and beautiful things, whatever. I can stare at their beautiful pancakes and eat my $7 piece of toast. Yeah. I was there. I saw, I conquered. Did I eat? No. Did I go home, save the money? Yes, I did. <laughs> um, and working on sociable hours. So it's really, really common for people to crave regular social hours. So yeah. nine to five, Monday to Friday, the good stuff. It's not where the money is made, particularly in hospitality, which is generally speaking what you do when you're young. Um, like I would crawl nightclubs and take photos. No one wants to be doing that at two in the morning on a Saturday. They want to be out. I'm there making big bucks. I'm like I'm, all my friends are uni students. I can hang out with you whenever. Like yeah. don't be messing up with my expensive hours. So Friday night, start working. Don't stop till Monday. That's the good money. Yeah, and always, absolutely. Yeah, like trying to just find a problem to a solution. Like if I want a TV, I'd gum tree it. Find the model I like, gum tree it. Like there are ways to get what you want. It's constant problem solving. When I first moved to, to Perth from Kalgoorlie because I lived in the country. Oh, no way. And uh, I, got, I was fortunate enough to uh, have my parents' investment house mm. here. So I, I got straight on to the book out the other rooms. Yeah. And that was my kind of safety income. I, I was very fortunate there. Yeah. But it was kind of redundant because I was an idiot at 19 and decided to get a car loan. Oh, so not the, mm, the car the big boys. loan. Yeah. 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 But the gum tree thing, that related because I went to the free section. Yeah. And I went straight into the couch. I, I think I rotated about five, six couches that I got for free. Yeah. Found a better one that was free. Take it. Flipped the other one for money. Yep. Always. And I was like, Are people not doing this. You know those like bulk collections? Yeah. Oh yes. I could not go across a good anything. I would. I would. I was a scab. Me too, but like yep. in the nicest way possible. Oh, like yeah. we do it. Like I'm not like blazed. Like what's it blazing? Brazen? Brazen about it? I wasn't like roaming around. Like I go in like the dark. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I see that sink. I know how much that sink costs. I've been to Bunnings before. <laughs> Sells it online for three hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Like the good stuff. Like it was a whole bunch of AstroTurf once and like. Did you have a, like a preferred suburb you'd hit? <laughs> oh, no, honestly, you have to go to the like Dalkeiths of the yeah. world. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm not checking it out in my, like I used to live in Ocean Reef. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm probably not there. <laughs> Absolutely. But like I used to Airbnb out my parents' room when they moved to Bunbury and they didn't know for a hot minute. <gasps> and then, <laughs> because I had like its own separate entrance and everything. Um, and then my parents were like, well, my mom found out. And, but like. So how I was raised, she was like, where's my cut? No <gasps> issue. Just where's her cut? And I was like, that's sort of like the yeah. vibes I had as a kid. Do you have any entrepreneurial sense within the school? With like in, in high school? Yeah. Not really, no. I think like I was too hell-bent on just like I was good, good student, yeah. good kid, loved school. Are you turning 30 this year? No, I'm so a, yeah, I so, just had my birthday. So I'm 31, so that meant you would have been in year eight when I was in year 10. 
And in year 10, so your year eight, so your first year of high school would have been when they abolished sugar in the canteen. (gasps) Yeah, they did. Do you remember that? I do. You were not sugar. You were like a little drug dealer, but sugar dealer. Yeah. No way. And you you mentioned uh, off air that your mum's a teacher. Yeah. My mum's a teacher. Oh. Guess where my my stockpile was? Yeah, no, in her office. In her office. Yeah. So what I did was I bought zombie chews. Oh, I love a zombie chew. They're very good. Good. The bulk shop. Mm. The bulk shop, $20 for 50. Yeah. I brought them in. Sold them at a dollar each, yep. and the Genius. kids the kids automatically forgot that they were worth twenty cents back when they were on sale at the canteen. Oh no way! Yeah, no. And a I couple wouldn't. of people call me up, but I'm like, you're just not my client. You're just not my customer. I don't care. <laughs> you're not my people. You know? Anyway, supply and um, demand. If you don't want it, you don't want it. Exactly. Do you want it though? <laughs> <laughs> I've got it for you. So by the end of my um, sugar cartel, um, at I the like end that. of the first term, I had year eight selling them for me. Yeah, that's when you I know would, you're in business. I would give them 10 mm. and if they sold all 10 I would, and bring me the money, yeah. they'll get a free uh, zombie trip. Oh, I love that. So you were like a sole trader, but now you're a corporation. Yes. Like we have employees. Yes. I hope you were paying payroll tax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, because you're technically meant to be fundraising, ah. my mum come in and oh, this no. is our communist Russia sort of vibe mm, coming in mm-hmm. going, mum, mum could have shut me down, but she goes, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, no. <laughs> and then when the teachers asked her, like, what is he fundraising for? She's like, no, nah, no, nah, he's fundraising. Fundraising, uh, fundraising. For himself. <laughs> so, See, uh, I was in Catholic school, so my mom definitely wouldn't have been able to do that. do that. But, like, she used to, like, harbour all of my stuff for me. Like, she was just a big locker. Yeah. Like, all my art things. All the other kids are, like, on the bus with their massive canvases. I'm like, don't you stress just taking him a garbage office. <laughs> But yeah, I loved having my mum at school. It was fun. But yeah. I loved I loved school in general. Like just a real excitable kid, to be fair. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I definitely could have gotten away with more yeah. than I thought. Oh, and you know what though? Like you, it's no, it's not possible. Like sometimes my staff, like I have 307 like little babies just Just there. casually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I love them. Obsessed with them. They annoy the living shit out of me sometimes though, but I'm obsessed with them. What's your average age for staff? 18. Nice. Somewhere around there. So no child, child la- um, slave labour yet? No, I almost got done once though. <gasps> I, yeah. Story time. Oh, because like, so <laughs> basically I don't employ anyone under the age of 15. Like I just, to be fair, lovely people, uh, not that not that helpful. It, it is what it is. But there are some really, <laughs> really, <laughs> they're too young. Um, but there's some really keen ones and I yeah. hate to squish spirit. I hate that. So like if someone comes to me and they're like, I am dying to work at Pretzel. I will do anything. But I love I'm, the colour pink. Yes, but I am 14 <laughs> and nine months or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm like, fine, sure, whatever. So we hired a few. We had maybe like two. And then all of a sudden um, one of their friends started like, I suppose, all of the friends started applying, right? So of we're course. all in on it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, You've um, opened up the floodgates. Right. And you know, because they have my email. So oh, I'm like, no. oh, you wouldn't have my email unless one of the friends gave it away. And yeah, like, imagine whatever. if they figured out what LinkedIn was. Uh, yeah, I know. Precisely. <laughs> precisely. <laughs> and so they're all emailing me their resumes. I'm like, no worries, whatever. But we have like a strict system for fairness with our staff. You must be able to work till 1030. You have to. Not, I don't care about your age, your parents, whatever. It doesn't make sense. Like that doesn't weigh in for me. Yeah. Because that's inequity in cleaning. You're like, oh, well, I'm only 15. So I have to go home at eight. That leaves everyone else to do the cleaning. It's not fair. We're one team. End of story. So one mum's kid got knocked back because she said, no, no, there's no way I can work past 9 p.m. My mum won't let me. And I said, that is unfortunate. You do not meet the bare basic requirement to do this job. Lovely knowing you or applying. Thanks for the application. But, you know, get back to me when that changes. Um, And then the mum got pissed because now obviously all the other little girls got employed. Her kid didn't get employed. So, you know. Sounds like a her problem. Yes, a bit of Karen, the injustice of it all. So she goes to wage line, which is like the WA one, and she says they want 14-year-olds to work until 10.30. I did not know that is illegal. Oh, dear. fully illegal. Oh, dear. So you're not supposed to have a kid work after 10 p.m. Oh, dear. Under the age of 15. Okay. So I then was investigated. And, like, obviously we went along with it. Yeah, and I was like, look, I'm so sorry. I literally, I did not know. I would yeah. never. I, this was early on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. I was like, I would never in a million years be slave labouring for half hour. Like, you know, I wouldn't. Yeah. But generally speaking as well, we really did not try to put those staff on late. They are young. They're not. I'm like, I mean, if you spend you a whole. need to be fair. Yeah, and you spend a whole day. Yeah, so we have the fair system. Yeah. It's like in writing and then what we do practically has to reflect more practical. But the law said no. 
Yeah, so they were like, absolutely not. We went back and calculated how many like slave labor hours we had. Like <laughs> it was very minimal. Thank you. Thank God. I hope no one clips this out of context. Oh, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we basically, the department was really cool and they were like, look, you're not the only person. It's a very common, you know, error. Um, but as long oh, as you don't do it again, yeah, then you're all good. You learn and was, from your mistakes. Yeah, and I was like, mm. thank God. And it's just just the half hour between ten and ten thirty. Yeah. So all up until ten. I mean, if anyone needs How to know, is Australia though, like you it's, get you get one dollar wrong in the U.S. system of tax and you go to jail. Here yeah. you're like, hey, just fix it. And I mean, like reasonably speaking, like where I have stumbled from time to time, because I have, um, because I, you know, I come from a creative background, not a yeah. business one. I don't have an MBA. I have, a, a, you know, an arts degree. Um, but you, you make assumptions and then you kind of forget that some stuff is regulated like that. Yeah. You got a, you got a background check. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just like super open. Like, mm. and I've been fine for it and like whatever, but I won't, I won't. Your intent is good. Yeah. And I won't spend time covering it up or I'm like, no, this is what happened. Yeah. I just didn't know. It is my fault. I should have done my due diligence. Like, yep. but having said that, it's not like we haven't had a zillion HR practices in place. We have consultants. Neither of them picked it up either. Wow. So yeah, it's it, when they went through the process, they were like, look, this was not intentional. Yep. And you have to sort of prove there was some intent if you're trying to Find so, a person. So how many days since the last incident? Oh, now Zero we don't days. hire anyone who's 14. I oh. spoke to the last remaining four kids and I was like, how long to your birthdays? Because yeah. I'm not going to fire you, but I need you to turn 15 real, real quick smart. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're all good and we just don't, no more 14 year olds, just don't do it. Yeah. So, so how do you handle problem solving in general with your multiple businesses? Um, we like, we're really geared up to be online. So um, we can be remote as possible. Uh, and problem solving like across such big areas, like meaning we have some in Melbourne and then we have some in WA, mm. can be tricky. Um, but what I've learned, particularly over COVID, is that every single area of the world can be attacked from somewhere else. So, for example, like we ran out of salt. Salt's very, very hard to get. It's pretzel salt, right, at one of my stores this morning in Doncaster. None of them drive. They don't drive. But Air Tasker. Get a man to go from one to the other, solved. But I can do that from here. And there's actually very, very few problems that distance, you know, impedes on being solved. Yeah. So, like, that's, I suppose, like, the biggest way we problem solve is, like, an in, like a very internet-based network of people. Yeah, and you build that system within those people. Yeah. And, like, you know, if we've got a maintenance issue, then, like, we, you know, extend them to this particular air tasker yeah. or whatever and we have people for things. But I suppose, like... Mostly, I wish it was a little different, but it is very me based. Yeah. So it's like people come up, they're like, hey, what about this? Then I say yes or no. Yeah. Um, but I definitely have some hardcore control issues that I'm like <laughs> working on. I'm working on them. Um, have you relinquished that control over time? No. No. I think, if anything, my grasp has gotten tighter. Yeah. Because more is at stake more and I feel more stake. responsible. And I'm like, you know, one pretzel goes down, like, what? That was fun. Two, I've got people now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. There's Is that some, how many you have? Uh, yes, yeah, so I have fourteen venues, one on the way. Yeah. So and that's a lot of people. People's kids have mortgages these days, and I have people with proper, you know, expenses, and you know, if we make it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. how do you handle that pressure? Um, probably like probably not well, I would say. But I mean, it, it's funny because I don't mind it, but. I allow it to sort of grow to a point where then I am like, fuck this, I'm out. Like, don't talk to me. I can't. So, like, trying to set, like, I just got an office recently, which I've always been very against because I don't want to be found. Like, I don't. <laughs> like, if I'm doing my own thing, I'm doing my own thing. And I like to work solo. But the office will solve a lot of these issues with my control because people have to find me to you know, get the answers they need. And then when they don't get it quick enough or they don't get the right answer, then I'm like, oh, they can't do the job yeah. and I lose trust. But in an office space where people can actually like rely on each other and help each other, I'm not the only source of, you know, information 24-7. But I have this unique ability to make people feel like I'm the only person on the planet with a valid opinion 
and it sucks. Like it's the worst skill I have. So do you have a right hand man, woman? Yeah, no, I do. So I have two, like Narx and Harry, um, and they're amazing. And then I have an ops manager for Priestess, Chubby Boy and Voodoo, and that's Annie and she's amazing. Um, and then I have external like assistants from yeah. the Philippines yeah. um, whom I love, but um, they work perfectly because I don't like to work with people. I like to work alone, <laughs> but that's an issue. Um, but so like they all, I wouldn't get by like without Ronnie and Ivy and like the the best so ever. you've delegated. Yeah. You've started to delegate. And 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 how how long ago did you start relinquishing that control? Because yeah, that is that is relinquishing. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. Um I definitely over COVID had to start. Yeah. It was like the first you can't physically be there to solve it. So mm. find someone who can. Um but and I mean it's been baby steps, but I think the problem is is like when it doesn't go well once for one thing, I'm like, out, see ya. And then we Ooh. start again. Yeah. Like for for an employee? Not an employee, but like a system. A system, yeah. Or a way of doing something which is generally linked to an employee. Do you throw away the whole system or do you tinker it? I wish I could say I tinkered more, but I do try to tinker when I think it's savable. Mm. But I tend to, being a perfectionist, many business people are, throw all of toys out the cot and start again. Yeah. And it's not the best, but I spend a lot of time recognising what I don't do well. Like, a crap ton. And I think that that's more positive than anything. Yeah, definitely. So when I'm like about to throw all my toys out of the cart, mm. I might remember that's a thing we don't do well. So like it's good to like continuously keep addressing that and then trying to like change patterns. Yeah. But people have this like bizarre assumption that like we just know what we're doing. <sighs> and you're like, so you like, well, no, we're people too. Yeah. Like just because we run companies or like CEOs and stuff like that, like they're not. Yeah, problems come and you got to fix them. Yeah. And if it's a domino effect for one problem in a system, you got to scrap the whole system. Have you found a time where the system works really, really well? Mm. And that you didn't like, like what, what's your longest standing system that you have? Oh, definitely deputy from like rostering. Like, and it's the best. Um, but like that system, infallible, does not fail. <laughs> and it's like super helpful. I would say it takes hours and hours and hours and hours and hours away from me. Um, but, you know, even, you know, I suppose like it's not really possible to have had a system for that long these days. Like I don't find any system really lasts more than six months without being usurped by a new one. But yeah. they're just, just constant improvement. Yeah, and that's, that's where I'm coming in now with the agency system the social media marketing systems. Mm, mm. I'm feeling like they're a little bit. Yeah, look. What are like, your thoughts on that? Well, so having like been in multiple areas of that and having potentially actually gone that way, like that was probably. Especially with your photography creative, yeah. Yeah. The like, top of the funnel really. Yeah, and mm. like branding, it was really like my major focus. So it was like you either go to an agency or you freelance. Um, and there are pros and cons to both, but it's super funny now being the client and then having a look at both options because freelancers are awesome. Love it. But incredibly expensive. Come in, just do what they need to do and no more. Yeah, cause, and they're not invis invested. No investment. No. And the lack of communal vision is, is deadly. Mm -hmm. So you can give vision to one set of people who's a videographer, say. You give brief to photographer. It's never the same. It never is. No. And they work independently of each other. They get their money independently of each other. They don't talk to the guys who do the packaging design at our shop. or So that disconnectedness of all of it is is deadly. Yeah. And then you get to the end of something, you think I've spent all of this money because while they seem cheaper or more economical, not cheaper, they never are, but economical, when you mush it all together and none of it works, everything was wasted. So... It's a difficult, like it's a difficult sort of area to work in. But then you want to go and like, so content creation, for instance, is so incredibly expensive and it's very difficult for businesses to to justify a lot of it. It, it is. Um, and it's such a gamble. Will it hit? Won't it hit? Who knows? There's, you can't fight the algorithm either. No. And mm. that return on investment is not promised. No. It's not. But the more money you invest, the more likely your return of investment, eh? Eh, it's a question. 
I don't, I, I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, you don't know. No. So in one hand you're like, I can make a thing on my phone and it could be hilarious and it could just kill it. Just will randomly. It, will it, won't it? Yeah. That takes a very particular person, a very particular set of skills, a very yeah. particular personality. And then on the other hand, you're like, oh, I could just throw stacks of money in it and surely that will work. Some cases it does, some cases it doesn't. But yeah, like Trigger the, words. the questions, like, and then to me, agencies is stacks of money. So that's throwing money at something mm. and saying, good God, I hope it works. So how have you managed to overcome that? Mm, so me personally, like, I dealt with a lot of our social media until just very, very recently when I finally found the people I think are going to be my perfect match. Um, but it's like dating. Like it's taken me. It is me, exactly like dating. Oh, it's taken me years and years and years and years to even like. It's the first Zoom call we're in. Like I was like, no, no, we're on the same page finally. Um, but like I have some amazing guys called like Harry and Lucky and they do super cool work for Pretzel and they're like really in my brain. Yeah. Like. And I love them and, like, they do a really, really great job. But, you know, they also have their own stuff going on and, you know, so it's difficult to to get everyone all on the same page. Yeah, you mentioned this off air as well, that that part where you, you need to find a creator that's kind of bought into you, not just themselves. Yeah. And that's kind of what I, uh, as a creator myself, yeah. um, I like doing my own thing. Yeah. But I like helping others. Yeah. I'm a protagonist. Yeah, cool. So I that. want that <laughs> I want that success for them. Yeah. And every time I get like asked to do a collab mm. or whatever, I'm like, yep, cool. Now like, what are your rates? And I, I hate that question because I'm like, I want to help you. Yeah. But I still need to get compensated. Yeah. But I can't guarantee you Yeah. The, That's the end your, of it. And then and then how I kind of sleep at night mm. really well <laughs> is I'm like, I'm gonna In create a gum tree you the, bed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an oversized one. So I give them a, um, I give them the content. The yeah. content is what they get. There is never a promise of it hitting. No. And they say, oh, okay, well, we're looking for this amount of views. And it, 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 the inbox is worse when mm-hmm. I'm rolling organically with my own content. Yeah. But right now I had a couple of million hits. Yeah. And I'm just getting inboxes of all these random brands. It's like, no, 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 I can't help you. Yeah. I can give you UGC, but that's it. Yeah. I'm not posting it on my channel. And as a brand, and this is something that I wanted to uh, also bring up, is a brand ambassador. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? So, like, I love the concept. I do not love the allocation. Yeah. So, like, I don't think that being a brand ambassador means being, quote, unquote, a brand ambassador. So if I find someone who I'm like, wow, we we are, like, I love you and we work, I'm not like, do you want to be a brand ambassador? I'm <laughs> like, hey come in, let's see what we can do together. Da, da, da. It's like an organic friendship. It's like friends of the brand. Yeah. And like, I'm always really, really cautious to make sure that it's like worth it for them, worth it for us. Like, you know, it's a fuck ton of work. <laughs> like I don't want to under, like never will underestimate the amount of effort that goes in. But I mean, sometimes they're just like, you know what? We would just love to come down. And if we love it and we actually do enjoy your product, we'll put it up. If we don't, we won't. I'm like, beautiful. Yeah. Go for it. I've, I've had a run in with a restaurant recently. I'm not going to mention them. But I was very excited about this new concept coming to Perth and uh, very interesting restaurant concept that's come over east very recently. Milky Lane? I'm not, I'm not going to talk about It's not Milky Lane. It's okay. something else. <laughs> um, yeah, the food sucked and I'm like, yeah, just- the, the idea is great but your food's shit. Yeah. And I can't like there's, there's a part of being real about this yeah. where – if you review the good stuff, you have to review the bad stuff. Yeah. And I feel bad because if I'm reviewing the bad stuff, that's someone's business. Oh, yes. You know, I strictly feel like if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. But you review. So you're like, no, no, if it was bad, I'm, it was bad. I tell so people. So it's just the language, right? It's like, oh, it's it's not for me because it is subjective. That works, I am one yeah. person. No, as long as you can like verify that, Yeah. Yeah. I like that though. That's fair. I think that's mm. very fair. But the also but also the other thing, and you might have experienced this um, being multiple mm. I don't dare call this franchising. So. No, 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 it is no, not. not. I own all of them. Yeah. <laughs> but like someone comes in and goes, Oh my god, your pretzels are amazing. Yeah. But then you just have that one cook, chef person oh. that just cooked it yeah. poorly yep. and cooked it. <laughs> Common. And the reflection is on that one. Oh, it is. So how do you combat that? So like generally speaking, you don't, right? So like we go out with full fairness and we go out with like serious, just like we fucked up. 
Like I've never been one to be like, oh, I'm, you know, this excuse, that excuse. At the end of the day, no matter what happened, and I mean, it's common with Karens. I think people don't give them enough credit in a weird way. So like whether or not she's a Karen, she's upset. Yeah. It's my job is to make her happy and it didn't. I failed at it. So, and I mean, whether or not it's justified, I would say 99.9% of the time it is not. Um, but the end result is undesirable and that's on me. We figure it out. So sorry, we fucked up. Is generally how I start that email. And like, I try and deal with as much of it as I can myself. Um, and like, people really haven't, like everyone's like, oh, there's staff shortages and stuff. Not really clocked that though. Like, yeah, a lot of the quality out there at the moment is not great. Because like I went somewhere last night actually and it's usually very, very amazing. But I think they're struggling to get staff and my food was terrible. And I was like, but I'm in, in the You're industry. Empathetic. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, there's I understand. I understand. Sometimes it's actually physically yeah. not possible. But like not the same with pretzel. Like, but sometimes we do have kids who just mess it up or staff who aren't doing the right thing for that day for whatever particular reason. And we try and be as fair as we possibly can and we try and say, look, we're sorry about your experience. I really appreciate if we had an email, like I will actually go really above and beyond for yeah. an email. If you go and plaster it on Google, I have much less respect, yeah. much less. Um, but nonetheless, I shall address. And we just try and say, look, this is not what we intend. This is what we do intend. If you'd love to give it another go, we'd love to work with you. Yeah. But otherwise you do have to have this level of like, it is what it is. Oh, tell, tell you what, I've been... Uh, Red Rooster's community manager for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Love Red Rooster. I, oh, good. Yeah. I'm going to clip that and put it on their <laughs> channel. Um, the comments, though. Oh, TikTok is the most vilely negative place oh, I have YouTube's been in worse. a long time. Oh, really? Yeah. We don't, I don't and, Instagram, out and Instagram as well. If, I always found they were very positive in the oh, beginning. Like Instagram had this weird positivity about depends it. Depends on which demographic you hit. Yeah, maybe. If you hit the American demographic, well, it is savage. But I just like, it really hurts me to know that yeah. people are like that. Yeah. Like, TikTok's onto it though. They, they, yeah. They, Throw you out. They yeah. ban you. They, they yeah, shadow like ban. Me, again, nothing nice to say. Don't say anything at all. Don't, oh. don't give light. Yeah. Like I think it's more damaging to just not say anything. Do you know Correct. what I mean? Like if I really don't like a person or a brand or this or that or had a bad experience, I'm not going to share you with my 3 million followers. Well, yeah. I, I don't yeah. have 3 million. I'm pretending I'm not an influencer. Yeah. But like <laughs> I just don't say about, don't talk about you at all. Don't give you the opportunity. Don't give you this, the light yeah. of day. I just, if, if I, as soon as I discover they're a brick wall, I'm like, Done. I just shower them with kindness. Yeah. I just I, say thank you. Yeah. Completely. <laughs> and they're like, they either don't respond or they go, that wasn't a compliment. I'm uh, like, yeah. thank you though. Yeah. I'm just happy you're speaking about me. Like yeah. what's that saying? Thank people, you for the engagement. Yeah. You're actually helping the algorithm by yeah. replying. You know that thing like when people are like, oh, well, at least you're talking about me. Like when people are like, oh, she was saying oh, something yeah. awful about you. You're like, well. At least she's talking about oh, me. Um, any publicity is good publicity. Yeah, like one of them. Yeah. But like, I mean, it does, like, I suppose for me being in my industry, it really highlights yeah. that there are people in the world at the moment who just fucking mm. suck. <laughs> like they just on every level suck. Especially hospitality. Oh, and you're like, <laughs> dude, I don't see you coming. Like, why do you not spend every single waking moment of your day complimenting people when things went right? Why do we feel the need to only pipe up when it goes wrong? Very good point. Like, there's there's a whole theory about this, and it's an it's a rabbit hole. I can oh, go down for oh, hours. Me too. But, but like, think of it like when you're driving a car, right? Someone someone cuts you off. You just like flip them off internally in your shell. Yeah. You swear. You verbally. Well, I do anyway. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> but if something, if you go up to the lights together and you're side by side, you're not rolling down your window, giving them no. the finger and yelling at them because you're there. Yeah. It's like the dogs barking on each side yeah. of the gate. They're barking at each other. As soon as the gate goes away, they're just like, Ooh, yeah. it's because they have that opportunity to do it yeah. just because they can. doesn't mean they should. No. But the, the reason why people express more negativity than positivity Bottom line is most of their lives are probably really not that great. And I find that just such a shitty fucking excuse for it. Oh, of course. I'm like, of course. well, get a better life then. Be happy with yourself. <laughs> I don't think that being negative all the time is really no. assisting with yeah. this goal of a better life. Exactly. And it's like, a defense mechanism as yeah. well. And we notice more negativity than we yeah. do positivity. Always. So it goes on the other side of the spectrum. Mm. The reason why we notice more negativity is because we need to survive. Mm. We need to survive and we feel attacked. Our, our aura is compromised and yeah. we need to go, oh, Someone's not liking my stuff. Yeah. 
oh my God, what do I do about it? But if someone's giving you positive, you're just yeah. like, oh yeah, all Thank is well you. in the world. Yeah. You know? And my mum raised me, she goes, you need to live neutrally. Yeah. If shit happens, the drop's not that bad. Yeah. If things are great, it's, you know, you can go up and go back down to neutral. Yeah. Because if you stay high and then it becomes negative, that drops harder. Yeah. And you're going to recover a lot slower. Mm. And then people live in la-la land. They do. Honestly, there are, like, I would say 99.9% .9 of the planet in general is in La La Land. Like, I actually feel like a very, very small amount of them come down to earth often. Yeah. Like, every now and again, sure, but often, no. And, like, even as a business person, like, it's interesting because um, we're a minority, but not used in the typical sense of that that term's used, but we're a very small amount of people because, yeah. generally speaking, mathematic dictates that if there's one of me, there's 300 staff members, you know what I mean? So it's very rare that you actually find people who seriously relate to you and your struggles because the general consensus is that we sit on these little thrones and have the time of our lives. Um, but it's not. And we have a unique set of problems that very, very few people can relate to. And we don't want to waste our time explaining it to someone who doesn't no. probably get it, hence the haters. Yeah. And then when you do like have an issue and you don't have anyone to sort of like sympathize with you, mm. you're forced to sort of like internalize it. Yeah. You're like, cool. I'm and just that's gonna... a bad thing too. It really is. You need to talk to someone. Like yeah. I have many mentors that I've somehow been lucky enough to come mm. across and I just give, they just listen mm. and they're like, we well, you know exactly what you're saying, but it's good. Yeah. It's good to let it out. And, and then they give me. so much better. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So good. You do. But when, when, when like, you know, like I've got mates who are doing their nine to five, they're not entrepreneurs, but they're, they're my mates. I love them. Yeah. And they listen as well, mm. but they don't have something to respond with no. that I need. Yeah. So, and one of my business coaches back in the day, I said to him, um, so like, what do you, how do you go by your day? You're clearly successful. How do you do it? He goes, I do one of two things. I either only talk business or I get fucked up shit face. Yeah. Nothing I'm, in between. I'm similar. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. I like try and keep them like very, very far apart because yeah. it helps you just otherwise people let you down. They oh, don't yeah. mean to, they no, don't. No. But again, it's that like, it's like that, like minority feeling, mm. which is like, I have so, so arrogant talking about yeah, this yeah, a little yeah. bit, you know, yeah. but it's, you but get it, is, it. It is like the way, and also that's another thing. Like you constantly feel this need to downplay what you do yeah. because you don't want to offend people in a yeah. room or like, but it's like, it takes so much skill to do what I do. It takes so much skill to work for me. Like I am not confused about that. <laughs> I would say it's probably harder to work for me yeah. than it is to be in my position, but they have a it, the point is that they are different mm. and that you still need a community and we are so stretched and so thin and like thinly covering. Like whereas my friends, like we go out and they're like, my boss did this and this and this is like they all know how to have that conversation and I'm like. Oh, my God, I'm the same. I'm like, cool. I, I can only do one-on-ones like, most of the time I, I, unless I there's like an activity we can do at the same time, yeah. like cards or whatever. Or I'm like, I'm like, oh, well, you know, oh, Dave, they pay this tax. Like I kind of treat the tax man as like when they're talking about how crap their bosses are or whatever, I'm like, yes, the tax man. Because he's like the most representation of a man above me that I hate. Yeah, I'm having a phone call with mine at 3 o'clock. I, yeah. <laughs> I love the bloke, but damn, like. Can yeah. you stop giving me bass statements, please? Yeah, honestly. So, and it's like, yeah, it's just like a very odd place to be in. So you have to make sure you separate them just to yeah. not be like, so if they don't get it, then I'm like, oh, maybe they're, they're talking about their refunds. You're just like, oh. I, what is that? What's that? Yeah. I don't get a refund. I'm only, I'm only very like new to that space because over the last few years I was a school teacher. Yeah. And then I went into photography and mm -hmm. then I was like, oh, i got to register a business. Blah, blah, blah. I, I've registered businesses before, like yeah. personal training and that. And then I was like, oh, i got to do another one. I know how to do that. Yeah. And then you go past the 75K mark. Oof. You're like, oh, i got to register for GST. Yeah. I've never done that before. And then you get start going up the bracket. And then you're like, oh, shit, I have to company structure this. Yeah, are you copping the overheads now? Like yeah. One of my favourite things to explain to my staff <laughs> is like how when they change a shift, right, they're like, it's just swapping a shift. I'm like, no, no, yeah, for you it is. But for us, it's 10 minutes of time to do it. Someone has to do that. That's an overhead office. Then I'm like, when you didn't log your timesheet correctly, they're like, oh, can you just fix this for us? times 307 yes. times a woman up. who has to go and do that. Yeah. When people have to do your bookkeeping, they have to submit your BAS statement. Someone has to be doing oh, all of these. Yeah. They like, I think people forget that it's not like, 
just I make all this money and yeah. nothing else is involved. And even like sole traders will start to struggle to the point where they need to pay a bookkeeper. They need, and you get squished in this very odd area where your overheads are almost overcompensating for your profit. Mm. So you can either be much, much bigger or you have to go much, much smaller. Yeah. And I think sometimes people don't understand that with trades, like when they're stupidly expensive. They're like, think about it. Yeah. They have a lot of expenses. Yeah, like, and I've got wedding photography as well yeah, as another yeah. business and I scaled that really quickly mm. and people come to me like, oh, I'm just looking for, you know, this much of a budget. I'm like, yeah. great, over there Yeah. for me and, and then supply and demand as well. Yeah. And the overheads, like I, I actually don't think about them as much Yeah. because I just love what I do. Mm -hmm. But when I do sit down the, the other occasion and add up all my equipment and all yeah. the all the subscriptions and all the time and I'm just like, yeah, I, sh I am justifying this cost. Yes. But that was – that was what I needed to do at the start. Now I'm just like, I'm booked out for two years. If you want me, this is the price. Otherwise, I'm going to offer you to the yeah. people that are still looking for it. And, give and that's them a good education. economy. Yeah. But it's also educating them, educating your employees, educating your clients yeah. to go, this is what's up. And you have to kind of simplify it yeah. because they're obviously not in that business. You can't yeah. overwhelm them. Yeah. You have to keep it simple. And then the other thing I learned about um, just like being with people in general who work the nine to five or whatever is they have, again, this sounds super arrogant, but they have one or two events going for them at any point in time. Whereas I feel business owners, entrepreneurs have like fucking 15 of things yeah. and you're constantly and <laughs> ADD, ADHD, yeah. you, you have to, you have to hyper focus on one because you've got those other 14 going, hello, notice me. Yeah. Whereas the common folk, again, trying to not to offend yeah. anyone, all the shit. Non-business owners. Non-business owners. <laughs> they come at you when something's not right in their life. Yeah. But they don't get that you have so many other things you are juggling. Yeah. And then, and this is where like you, the 99.9% yeah. .9 is correct or the 0.01%. It takes a very certain skill set to accomplish this. You, you need to be able to handle it. You need to be able to handle that own stress. Yeah. And then the external forces coming in going, what are you doing? What mm. the fuck? You mm -hmm. know, like why, you know, this, that. This is maintenance issues. Like, and yeah, I'm, yeah. it's so funny being so close to the age group. Like I left the oh, workforce yeah. and then, and then started owning my own company. How old were you when you did that? 23. Amazing. So I was so incredibly close to it. And I used to think like when I worked at Pretzel, I was like, we need one little thing fixed or whatever. And I would like, why is this taking this woman oh. four months? I'm like, I could do it in five minutes. I'll just walk myself down to Big W. I could solve this problem. Like this is 17 year old Brit. And then my staff think similarly in my direction and I don't blame them. Not a, do not at all. But then when I try and break it down for them, I'm like, yes, no, half hour task, baby. A hundred half hour tasks though, <laughs> not so simple. Yeah. And like priorities, you have to prioritize certain things over other things. Yeah. And unfortunately that maintenance task is yes, low on the priority list. 1A, 1B. Yeah. Even if we had a full time man for that, mm. like, if you have one problem, sometimes like, you know, when we were trying to wean the staff off me personally, that was the best way I'd explain it. Yeah. Um, if I did one task for every single one of you each day, even if that task only took me five minutes, even if you just asked me one favor, mm. I don't actually have, that's more than 24 hours. Yeah. I would, I would, I wouldn't survive. So how do you, do you ever give them the permission or the the flexibility to figure it out on their own? Yes. And I see, but I'm like, I'm a bit funny about it. So, yeah. like, on one hand, I'm like, fucking go for it. Enjoy. And then on the other hand, I'm like, I let them do it and then I'm very highly critical of how it ended up. And I'm like, I would have done it like this and this and this and this, but I'm getting way better. But that's better. candor. That's kind candor coming across. That's yeah. very important. And I'm like, and I'm getting way better at being, yeah. like, goal orientated rather than the journey orientated because I'm like, I would have done it like this, 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 this and this and it's not perfect unless it looks like that. But if I'm not involved in that, and I just see that the goal and the it's achieved. The outcome is achieved, yeah. Then I'm like, cool beans, we got there. <laughs> but I like, I love to let my staff run with stuff. And I really love to, like, you know, sometimes they'll come to me and they're like, I want to be this. 
And I'm like, who do I have in my network? Like, what can I do to help them? How good like, does that feel? I fucking love it. Like, yeah. And sometimes I feel badly because I like run out of time to be able to help. So I have to be like a little bit more picky and choosy about what I do and don't do. Um, but I really spend a lot of my time trying to make sure my job, like I kind of see my job as keeping them happy. And like their job is to sell pretzels. Me, I... I get to do a fun yeah, thing for 300 for idiots. Yeah. yeah. And I call them my idiots, but like the most loving idiot, <laughs> loving way possible. But like when I started, I thought my job was to make money. But what I love is my, is my kids. Yeah. And I love like watching them make friends and like we kind of, we're a little bit weird. So like lots of people like find their little weird friendship groups. They, you have that and, mutual trust as well. Yeah. I've sensed that. That's and good. And I, I love what like people always comment. They're like, it's, they're so young. And I'm like, yeah, but it's idiotic as a 23-year-old to be, you know what I mean? Of course they were going to be younger than me. And I like to prove that we're not all shitty. Millennials aren't all shitty. <laughs> like <laughs> these kids have some real skill when you let them and they can do really, really amazing things if you give them the opportunity to do yeah, it. And it's a stepping stone to the rest of their lives. Yeah. It's a part of like, and if you give them the resources, they'll be forever grateful. Yeah. And like, as I was saying before, like with my 10, 30 PM thing, like I take those kids super seriously and I take like their discipline really seriously. And I'm like, arrive 15 minutes early. And all of you get the whole pushback, like, oh, it's just, you're my boss. Why would I do that? Da, da, da. Very millennial at the moment to like be cool about not being good at your job. And then I'm like, no, no, it's not for me. It's for you because this is a good skill for you to learn. Yeah. And I understand you're all not going to be here for the rest of your life. So that's not what I'm asking. But I'm saying like, this is a great opportunity to learn discipline, good skills, have fun, enjoy yourself, find a way to make money, be happy, contribute to something, feel a part of a community yeah. and then take those skills and move on with it. Yeah. I'm not a dictator, but yes, things are very strict. Reason being like your mom doesn't let you go out to a club at, you know, three in the morning when you're 12. Cause it's not good for you. Yeah. <laughs> so they, They're getting a reality check as well because at school it, they try to put that authority on them, yeah, but it's not working. No. But when they come to the workplace, you end up having to pick up the pieces. Yeah, and I think that if a lot more management could understand that they sit down all day in a class in a uniform that is dictated to them, at a time that is dictated to them, in a class that is dictated to them, if you give them an ounce of responsibility, they love it. They are so excited by it. I mean, some of them are a bit lazier and they're like, no, thank you. Um, but if you find a kid that's really into it, yeah. they are like, this is the time of my life. Yeah. And sometimes I have to watch myself because like I have one kid, his name's Connor. He's, he's a legend. Like he's super young. He's so good at his job and he's super passionate. Great kid. But I will constantly like... I want to make sure he's okay. So like he'll try and work like 25 hours a week or something. I'm like, you have school. And I'll like, you know what I mean? Like, but it's not like Mama just. Mama Brit coming in. Yeah. And like just recently I was like, no, no, you got to stop that. Like he can do his own thing. You are actually not his mother. Um, and so like we like offered him a supervisor position and like people are like he's very, like he's 16, 17, something like that. He's earned his stripes though. He has. And his age should not determine it. I mean, look, he can sink or he can swim. We'll be there to support him either way. But um, it's like being able to like let people know that just because you're young and you're not heard often oh, yeah. doesn't mean you have to act like a kid. You know what I mean? Like no. if you want something and you're willing to work for it and you're willing to show that you have the maturity to do it, it does, I don't care how old you are. Yeah. But like I want to encourage kids to be good at it because it is common at the moment to be like, fuck my boss, fuck my job, you know, but la, 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 la. It, I see it a yeah. lot. If you come in from an, a point of understanding and what they're thinking, yeah. you'll win every time. And that's like, that's why I succeeded as a school teacher. I came in and understood what they were thinking. Mm. So what do I have to wear this or this yeah. or this? I'm like, well, to be honest, you, I, I don't really care if you wear this color shoe or this hat in class. Yeah. But there's a, there's a structure in the, in the school yeah. and I have to abide by it. Yeah. And they loved that. They respected that. And then I'm like, oh, sir, I want to listen to music. It helps me concentrate. I was like, me too. Yeah. Me too. You know what? Put your headphones in. But if you see a deputy principal come in, yep. you gotta you gotta hide that stuff because it's my ass. Yes. And we do a similar thing. Yeah. Like if I have a kid who needs something and like she'll like she or he will come to me and they're like, it's against the rules. And I'm like, look, between you and I, I'll solve it. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, I understand where you're coming from. I say this thing to them all the time. I measure intentions only. That is how I run my life. So I you could burn my store down. And if you were like, Britt, I was trying to do this and it was positive, 
not I wouldn't bat an eyelid. I would not be upset even in the slightest. And that's accident. why you're successful right there. That but, is. And like sometimes people are like, <laughs> I got fired because of this. And I'm like, no, no, you got fired because your intentions were awful. Like if you consistently don't rock up at the 15 minutes you're supposed to, there is a kid waiting at four o'clock to leave. And you were consistently making that person wait because you don't want to be prepared for your shift. Yeah. The intention there is selfish and I don't fuck with that. Yeah. So see ya. I don't want to, I don't want that. But if you can burn my shop down, <laughs> like you can do that and I will not fire you. But if you, Perfect. your intentions are not good. Yeah. Then I like I don't like when people fuck my kids. I'm like that includes my kids. So if you're like we've all got to get along. Not clip that out of context either. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so going back to when you first started, this is something I should have asked you at the start. But what was it like getting that hundred grand and however you, uh, you know. Oh, so I, we had like the container done. Um, and Where then, was it? Is it the Northbridge one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's my first one. Um, and to be fair, you know, it's so funny. Like I retrofitted this whole thing, did all these like DIY, like gum tree Britney problem solving things, right? Should I just paid someone for do it right in the first place, but whatever. Um, it was more fun though. Oh, yeah. Kind and of. I, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, that's the phase I was at. Like two <laughs> years later, I was like, just pay for the nice things and you don't have to fix them is where I got to. But um, like- the first time, so I paid the deposit and then I had to pay this like huge check, like this huge check for, and I gave the money to the guy and I was like, do you have a bathroom? I was just like, really need to go to the bathroom. I like vomited. I was so like, so like, oh my God, what have I done? How am I going to do this? Like what, what, what is going on? But giving over that money was so like, I'm going to have to finish this, aren't I? You're in. You're I'm all in. in. You're all in. You're, you're invested, literally invested. Exactly. And so then I, like, I opened it and like there was a bunch of problems with the power and everything, but we solved it. Everything yeah. was fine. We got there in the end. Um, but then I was the world's worst manager. Like, uh, I you've was- you've never done it before. No. And wow. I was a kid, a kid with a huge ego who thought she could do everything. And to be fair, to my credit, I can do a lot of things, yes. But is it possible to have just instant overnight emotional intelligence? No. At that age as well, it's it's really hard to. Oh, and I could not understand that people couldn't understand. And I would I was under so much pressure myself mm. from myself that I was horrible. Like I was rude and mean and and like I'd always only worked for myself and in a creative environment, which is actually quite high pressure and very rude. So that's sort of only what I knew. And I apart from that, only worked in restaurants, really, which, you know, chefs are screaming at you, you're an idiot, da da da, da like that was can't sort of go, can't do anything wrong. Yeah, it was sort of like the vibes. So I was just like awful, you know. Yeah. What I mean, I just did not understand people. And eventually, my dad, who is an incredible, uh, he used to work on gold mines. He shift boss managers, incredible manager. Um, and he was like, "You're not going to get anywhere doing this. Like, you're going to have to figure out how to get on board with this, or like, fig, you know, figure something else out." So I basically said to myself. You and I, Britt, we're going to be in this container for a whole year. And I was. For 365 days in a row, I did not leave that container. And I worked every opening hour. So till two in the morning, you name How it. How close did you live by? Or did you actually literally? <laughs> I literally lived 40 minutes away. Oh, whoa. So sometimes I would sleep there. Like my turnaround on my shift was so short. Yeah. Like I would finish up uh, oh, like a Saturday night. And then I would basically have to be back there at nine in the morning, finish the Saturday night at like two, three in the morning. I'd clean till like four or five. I'm obsessively cleaning. And then I'd have to go run errands and pick stuff up before I got to work anyways, take a quick nap, go to work. Like I was working crazy hours and it was through proving that to them that I then learnt to manage. You got that grit and you got that experience. And then I will not, and to this day, I will not ask anyone to do something that I have not done myself. Yeah. I won't. That's the big difference. So I'm like, been there, done that. And like, I still feel guilt about it. Like I feel guilty constantly that I'm not in the store and I'm like, I should be like, I want to show them that like, I, you do know. Do you sometimes do it though? I did recently. Yeah. yeah. With Melbourne. Cause we had to like, sort of like change up Melbourne. Like after undercover COVID. boss vibes. No, like the most cover boss. I was like there. I'm like, hello. Hi, I'm Brittany. I'm working in your store. Um, but I love it. Like I really, I would love to do it more often. It's not good business because I could be spending my time doing something that's more beneficial for everyone, da, 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 et cetera. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So what's, work- your, what's your day to day like now? Um, so I pretty much computer bound. Like big delegations. So I'm always there flicking things off, trying to make sure that like everyone's got their stuff. Big switchboard in front of you. Kind of. 
yeah, yeah, but it's an email. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like sort of sorting things out, taking meetings, going back and forth or whatever, just to sort things out. I yeah. just, I'm a glorified sorter outer. And that's sort of what I do. Yeah. So what decided to go, all right, let's do something different. Let's get a coffee joint. ADHD. For sure. Fair enough. Yeah, he was like, we're bored. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Um, and I so I'm a brand designer by trade. So I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, and then the opportunity for Voodoo came up and I was like, oh, my God, we could do this and this and this and this. Next minute, I already have it. Then Chubby Boy. I was like, wouldn't it be cute if it was a little ghost that like lived in a cafe and he was like Japanese. I'm obsessed with Japan. And I was like, I'm like it'll be so cute and we can sell shakpan. Now I have that. Um, and it so, worked. Yeah, yeah. And it worked really yeah. well. Yeah, and I mean similar principles. Um, but to be fair, really going to check out not like of those ones, but that's not where I want to keep going. And yeah. I always thought I might do restaurants, bars, bigger operations. But um, the way that the world is trending, that's not – it's not going to be – I don't think it's going to be – as grati- like gratifying as it should be anymore. And I think that there's just a lot of complaining. There's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of, um, you know, like staff can be very hard to get these days in general, but the hospitality industry is very, very looked down on. It mm. really is. Um, and I think that, you know, there's a lot of hurdles. And as I'm getting older, like hurdles is not what I'm, not what I'm about. I think like bars and restaurants should be for like 22-year-old young guns who were industry involved. Like yeah. Baristas of their own. Yeah, I worked at the court for a little bit, just uh, up the road from your your first joint. Yeah, I loved it. And the court. I loved it. I loved it. It's back so then, much fun. Back then, it was so much like mm. it was a vibe. Yeah. Uh, back when it was actually a gay a gay bar. Yeah. And <laughs> um, I loved the whole just come in and I was a glassy. Yeah. And that's all I wanted to be because yep. I couldn't be a bartender because no, my no, no, back no, no, would have no. cooked me. And you are I like was 60 just, foot tall. Yeah. I was just like, bang, bang, bang. I love the fact that I could just hold a tray and go yeah. through the crowd like, move, move, Oh, my God, they would move. have loved you because you don't even have to say move. You yeah. are above and everyone then, already. And then five foot, five foot uh, yeah. sh- short, short boy. Just like, oh, and I'm just like, move, move. And then I'd have like a whole forearm of glasses yeah. and I'm just like, move, move. You ever been to the MBH, the Marley Beach Hotel? Oh, yeah. That was my stomping ground back in the day. I used to work there. So like- I just love the vibes. Yeah. Like just the mess of it the all. Roof's the, a bit low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> mess of it all, the people, like the crazy. Yeah. Like and also like getting to work with those kinds of people. Like some of my best friends I made there and like, you know, like some of them lived along the beach there and we go out every Sunday yeah. and like we go out after work and we have staffies and like all that kind of stuff. Like that's why you do hospo. But absolutely nobody advertises that. They're like, again, it's like that negative V positive. They're like, oh, you have to, you know, give up your weekends and like, you know, blah, well, blah, blah. You chose to give up your weekends because you need money. People yell at you and yeah. you oh, you're smelly <laughs> and there's food and there's dishes. And I'm like, why isn't anyone being like, by the way, you are at a party all the time. And yeah. it is stressful work. It's hard, but it's fast and it's fun and it's exciting. Yeah, time goes by quickly. Yeah. That's why I really like working about the court and a few other places I worked at. By the time it was 2.30 closing, like, I was like, I did so many steps. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I mean like that sort of like, you know, sentiment is is dying a bit. And mm. we like, I mean, which has been discovered recently in the last two years, have a huge gap in chefs because it's not appreciated. So people aren't studying it. They aren't learning those skills because royally you're like, oh, you're a chef. Mm. You're like, well, no, actually. They're, yeah. you know, like that's and unless you're up here working at a very particular location. I'm a sandwich artist. Yeah, like why isn't that a thing? Like they Subway. are phenomenal <laughs> sandwich artists at yeah. Subway and like just respect it, which is like very, I don't know, maybe you have a similar feeling like being immigrant-y, but um, like where I come from, um, like Austra- okay, how do we explain? Australians are the most well-intentioned people I think I've ever met. Like I love them. Big, mm. big fan. I'm an Australian. Um, But sometimes we miss the point generally, but not on our fault, just because of how we've grown up. So like, they'll be very, very compassionate. And they'll say, oh, like, you know, don't be mean to the janitor. Like, you know, be nice to him, da, 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 because he's just a janitor and no, 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 no. In there six times, you have just disrespected that man, like 45 times because you are down talking to him with the guys intentionally of a hundred percent kindness but like where i come from it you just respect what they do right just respect anyone but you respect them at any level so you say you don't treat him you don't be nice to the janitor you be as nice to the janitor as you are to your boss you do that 
my uh, cleaner story. Uh, I always love talking to anybody new for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> cleaner rocks and up. Cleaner rocks up. And I had another cleaner uh, and he sold the business. Mm. And I was like, okay, cool. And then this new guy, Indian fella. Mm-hmm. And I've got a lot of Indian friends, uh, most of them Punjabi. And his last name is Singh. Yeah. I'm like, cool, another Punjabi. Yeah. We're going to have a lot of – Singh likes me. Know, yeah. Same stuff. And then – I said to him, we've got talking and find out what he, what he does and things. What he, what else does he do? Yeah. And yeah, he goes, he runs Airbnbs. Yeah. I was like, oh, cool. So like, do you, he, he's like, yeah, he, got, he has a business. few Airbnbs. Yeah. I'm like, oh, what are you doing being a, jan- uh, like, like a cleaner? Yeah. Like, you know, I've, I've done my cleaning. I've done all that. It's like just to see what it's like. Yeah. And he goes, oh, just just to burn calories, just to oh, get up and about. It. That's such a resourceful thing to do. Yeah. There's so many Airbnbs he had. How many? 120. Yeah. No, see, this is me. Like, he I would so- be doing that. Yeah, he sold it for like $2.6 million. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a multi-millionaire clean yeah, my house. I would too. Like, honestly, that's the vibes. I love that. And yeah. like, that, like, I've got to be doing something. It may as well yeah. be making me money. Like, I don't understand the gym. Like, this man, I have no idea why anyone attends a gym. <laughs> Unless you want to be a bodybuilder like, yeah. and you've got some serious, I need a dumbbell. Go work hospo. Work a couple oh. hours at pretzel. Keg, kegs. Honestly, like kegs around. getting below, oh, like yeah. for the dough, up your arms, the strength, the sweat. Yeah. Like the, you, it's paid exercise. Like yeah. it really is. But like, I mean, like in that man there, like, you know, you don't need to know their scenario, but like, yeah, like a South African, like, oh, he gets paid 20 bucks, whatever. That is what it is. Like you just respect what he does. Yeah. You just say, well, that's what he does and that's what it is. Like. There's no yeah. kindness and in the lack of kindness is a respect yeah. where Australians sometimes, unfortunately, trying to be kind, forget that this, it's a sympathy. It's not a kindness, it's a sympathy. And like, you know, I mean, it's such an important vital job. Like they're like, oh, you a bin man. Like bin men are the crux of this planet. Like if there are no bin men, we all don't function. Yeah. So like... But they're like, oh, you know, oh, you, oh, you're a bin man. You're like, oh, that's great, that's great for you. You know that kind of that kind of conversation. I get it. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, oh, you're like, oh, like a South African though would be like, oh, you're a bin man. What a fucking shit job. I hope you get paid well. <laughs> be like, God, what hours you worked? Da, da, da. They'd ask some questions. Yeah, I really appreciate your service. You know? Yeah, like, and like, they might not even say that, but they'd be like. Good, but they won't treat him differently. Mm. Like, and they'll be like, "Yeah, what a crazy! Like, what do you see? Do you ever find weird stuff? You know, they'll take an interest. Yeah, and in that, it's respect. Yeah, like I respect that you do that, and I like they understand. I suppose that ninety nine point nine percent percent of people don't love their jobs either. Oh, you're a business owner. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, what I mean, everyone doesn't say that to accountants, but I would say there are more accountants that hate mm. their job than bin men. When was the last time you had a day off? Ah, uh, for uh, proper. Um, I just recently went to Victoria and I went snowboarding. Ooh, first so, time? Uh, no, but ish. I'm a skateboarder. Like I skate a lot. Okay. Um, so I thought this was like a very transferable skill. No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I got there in the end, but yeah. Like so I had a couple of days up in the snow and I was like, I'm not replying. I'm not. I'm not doing it. Um, and so like they were really, really good. But I, I don't get like weekends like people do and I don't get like – like, and even if I'm – off like my kids are pretty good they try and avoid me on a saturday so i'm usually drunk um but see, like even your that, kids is in your employee yeah, yeah 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 um but even that like i do kind of have to be drunk if i'm gonna fully forget what's going on but to be Escape. fair yeah because like in the back of my head i'm like you know in this and i wonder if a kid needs me i'll check mm. how the store's going see if everyone's cool da, da, da. so you don't get days off but if i do get to have time off it's it's more like it like a chunk yeah so because i get it yeah, and like that first day. For me, it's sleep. <laughs> yeah, isn't it good though? Yeah, yeah. Uh, after I, I sleep open, like a baby. Oh, and after I open a store, it's the one time I don't feel guilty about it because I'm like, look at all that. I've been up for four days. Look at all that work I did. Mm. So I go to sleep all day and I feel like, like the first time I didn't have guilt over not working in the last five years was when I got in a car accident and oh. I was in hospital. And it was the best five days of my life because that's the world's greatest excuse for yeah. not working. Yeah, my... Another shit one is worse than that when a relative passes away. Yeah, do you not have that one? Yeah, it's the worst. Yeah, the worst. Mm. And I had to have a break because mm, you can't physically. No, and it was it was actually last month. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I just clicked with what I wanted to do yeah. with all of this and my stuff. And I remember I was sitting on the laptop mm. at 4 p.m. My mum rings me mm. and she's like, you just hear her crying. And I'm just like, mm. fuck, you knew exactly what was happening. Yeah. And my grandma passed away and, and it was just like two days later because I had a wedding mm. to, to, to go. Yeah, that's hard. I actually escaped. Like I did it. Yeah. And I had a whole emotional post about it the other day, but I still carried on. Yeah. And I just – and it wasn't like, a, oh, my God, I'm getting on with it. Everybody tell me how good I am. It was yeah. just literally I just didn't tell anybody. Just do. And I just did it. And yeah. then afterwards I was so grateful for everything that happened. But um, like in terms of people helping me and, yeah, and just, just people helping me in general without even knowing. Yeah. But it is important to talk to someone about it. Yeah. You know, it is – and and dr- drinking, I mean – it is a good time to let go, but I also realise it's uh, not a good habit. No, no, no. What about your? Uh, let me know if it's too personal, but your love life. How's that? Oh, so like I've been with my boyfriend, which is hilarious, um, for <laughs> twelve years. Some, wow. Yeah. Sometimes people are like, "Oh, he's much much better looking than I am. He's gorgeous." Yeah. Um, and so some people are like, "Have you just hopped on the train since the money arrived?" Basically, because he's so much better <gasps> looking than me. <laughs> And, like, it's so funny, but, like, we've been together for – since year 12, so, like, the longest time ever. But um, we are really – he's really suited for this in a weird way. So, like, like he – no ego. Like, no man stuff, no, like, I must be macho, none of that. Um, and he's happy as Larry to be like, look at my girlfriend go. Like, that's yeah. – like how he that's should be. Yeah. And he's like, um, he's a f- super talented draftsman in his own right. And he yeah. does that. Um, and he drafts all the pretzels with me. And so we yeah. get to work together, <laughs> but he's like a labor sim, like a bit of an ADHD kind of kid too, but he loves to fix things and, and help. And like, I move things quickly and I don't think all the time. Whereas John's like a thinker. So like if we go and fix something in one of the stores or whatever, I'm like, oh, just do that. That'll be fine. Five minutes later, it's falling off. You know what I mean? Like no thought. So he likes to do that. Like he'll come in and he'll solve stuff. But super huge amounts of pressure on it in general because Hmm. I'm not available like a normal person is. And, you know, like he comes home from work. If I've had a shitty day, he's copping it. Like and not, you know, literally – but if I'm just not in, like, I don't take it out on him. But if I'm not in a good mood, I'm not in a good mood. Whereas, like, some people come home from work and they're like, hey, honey, like, how's it going? Da, da, da. They do their work. And, uh, you know, I mean, sorry, like, they do meals together. And, like, I'm like, hey, hi. Like, I'm still working. Or, you know, if we go to dinner, I have, like, a massive rant about work. You know what I mean? Like, so it's it does affect it, but he's super understanding of it. That's and like, important, yeah. Yeah, and like when we go to the snow, for instance, I was like, no, no, do the right thing. And the right thing is to shut your phone off. Not so much for me, but for the people I went with. So like as long as you can kind of throw it back, like in that direction, and also like it's not fair though. 10% of the time Jordan gets his way, 90% of the time I get mine because we have signed up to 307 Idiots, whom I love. Yeah. So like, and it wasn't a me, it was we. Like, And I own it all and it's all in my name and it's all mine and everything's like, you know, we – it's very separate like that. But um, that doesn't mean that Jordan does not. He so has to contribute. Yeah. And he he loves it. Like he loves doing it. But he also, I think, gets a cool opportunity to see it close up but not be a part of it. Do you see yourself moving on? From? Pretzel? Yes. And it's only a very recent thought of mine because I would be silly to – spend my whole life pursuing this one thing even though I love it when there is so much going on up here. And, like, I, I just – it's that guilt. You feel owed. Like, you feel like this I'm it, me, pretzel, we're the same thing. Um, but, like, realising that it is just a chapter and it will be at some stage just a chapter and that there are other things you can do and there are other impacts you can have and it doesn't have to be this, like – I abandoned pretzel. You know what I mean? You can just say, look, no, I sold it. There's new blood in it. Still has a life. You birthed it. Yeah. Now it's it's going on on its own. Yeah. And I mean like. Don't kill my baby. Yeah. And like we're looking and doing like a new sort of, um, not a franchise model, but we want to supersede stuff from our company to own it. In a, yeah, in a way of being like hospital is worth the investment. Like there is a serious life here with serious money. So if you want to, you know, if you don't really have traditional skill sets, not very academic maybe or whatever it is, and like hospital is something you want to pursue, join Pretzel, start learning, we'll get you there. 
you can supersede through the company to actually own them. Um, and in that way, we get to expand, but my staff get reward for, for progressing. I also don't have the onus of managing physically all of them because it's not going to get, it's not possible at a certain point. Um, we don't have to take in outsiders necessarily. And like, you know, that's sort of the next stage. And once that stage is up and running, then I think it's like time for me to do something else. Yeah, it's self-sufficient. You've done your thing. Yeah. And um, like those people will carry it on. My, my staff yeah. will carry it on. So what do you see yourself doing later? Is that too far ahead for you? Have you thought about it? I would love e-commerce. Like I would love to explore that area just because like my branding brain loves it. Like I would love an opportunity to be able to brand a new thing a week. You know what I mean? Like have one of those like Unilever type businesses that it's like, we just make things pretty, but like yeah. that's like so much people ask me, they're like, what is the purpose of pretzel? What problem does it solve? And I'm like none, none, none of the problems. It solves none of them. It is just for fun. Like yeah. that is what we do it for, for fun. Yeah. Are you mad that we're successful because we did it for fun? It's just for fun. Like, yeah. and it's, it's just for a good time. And like, I think my purpose on the planet is to just give a good time. I don't solve problems. I don't change things in any way, shape or form dramatically. But giving a good time is a problem. It's itself. necessary too. Yeah. You know what I mean? We can't be bored all the time. And sometimes you've got to like step into a all pink random shop and eat carbs and have a good time. It is what it is. That is a great problem that's solved. Yeah. I'm walking <laughs> very rarely stumbling home and I'm like, there's that pink. Yeah. I hope it's open. And I love that like, yeah, connection with good time that we have yeah. a lot. But like, I would like to make un like unpretty things prettier. Oh, like, yeah. I'm a big believer in like not having things in your life like that aren't ideal. So I want to be able to create those things. Yeah. And you like even if you've ever been on the design stuff dot com. Yeah. Oh, it's like kind of reminds me of like pigeonhole. Oh, but it's like beautiful stuff, mm. right? But I want to do that for food. Yeah. So like you know you go buy like a Kellogg's bar and they all kind of look the same and like da 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 boring 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 boring. I'd like an e-commerce food business that took normal items. Whatever it is I'm in. Yeah, and just like make fun. them so fun. <laughs> like why could they not just be like the most fun things ever? Yeah, like those Dunkaroos back in the yes, day. Yes, like that. Yeah. But like with like sick branding and amazing situation and like but the whole brand as a whole will work together to have these items released. Do you know the like, best one that's been done? What? One car. Remember all the nerds and oh, all Oh, and like even like, you know, like the 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 whole golden ticket situation. Yeah, oh, that was brilliant. Like that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Like that fun on and things. And Starburst did it as well. Yeah. Starburst did a good job with it. And like just the fun on things, like just beautiful, like even Carmen's bars, like back in their day, like mm. now I, I would have different things to say about it. But like they used to be like this elite luxury bar. Yeah. And it, it provided something to people. Like, yeah, I mean, sure, you just eat it, but you open your little lunchbox and you're like, I have an elite bar today. I'm an elite person. Yes. Like that in itself is a fun experience. You've given value add to a human in their life. That's it. So like that's what I'd like to do. And like I think food just like, you know, sometimes, yeah, they're just like special K box. Like the fact that the special K box still looks like the special K box, I get it. Like they need to for like customer retention. Like why isn't it purple some weeks, orange some weeks, pink other weeks? Why don't you like shove little dinosaurs in it sometimes? Or I don't know, like make it elite sometimes. Like it's just, there's so much room for those things to be funner and cooler. And they have so much access to our lives constantly. Like that's what I'd like to do. But I, I'd like e-commerce. I like the idea of it. Yeah. If you were to write your book, what would you call it? You know, I like literally I've been asked like many multiple times, like, would you write a book for us? And I'm like, no, nope. um, b because the title would essentially be like notes from a 23 year old idiot. Like, you know what I mean? Like, That's perfect. Yeah. Like it's, you know how many people would read that? <laughs> Just that, that, that title is amazing. And I mean, like I couldn't string together the thoughts I have in my head. So it would have to be rambling notes. That's, like, that's how you do, do it. it, it Ghostwriters. Like a yeah. series of dumb things that I have thought yeah. like constantly. And I have so many of them in my brain. But like, Let them out, girl. Yeah. And I just like, but I wonder about things that I just, I'm like, why is no one else wondering about this? Oh, uh, like, and I, I put that. him down and I'm like, is anyone else? Just hit me up. I'll yeah, be probably like, thinking the same thing. And like, even like the systems and stuff we have in the planet. And like, why do we know who the prime minister is? Dumb. <laughs> I think that's so dumb. You Accountability. Just, no, but you're opening up this man or woman to need public attention. Yeah. You know why I'd never do that job? Public attention. How do they get votes though? We, I reckon it should be like, I was long, but I think there should be two people from every category imaginable in Australia, right? What, so what, what sort of categories are you talking about? I think that there should be a representation of two five-year-olds. There should be a boy, girl, a little 
boy five year old, a girl five year old, like a class president. Yeah, or there should be like a you know maybe like a trans nine year old, or and then we move all the way up, all the way to a an eighty year old gay man, whatever. Yeah, we have a commission. Do they do they progress up though as they get no. older, or what, is it just like one to two year tenure? Okay, and commissioned. Okay. So like everyone votes. There's multiple votes. So many people have voted in on this little thing, right? Um, and there is one person who is nameless, and they are paid very well. Pay peanuts, get monkeys. They should, we oh, should yeah, that's, not be that's paying everywhere. our prime minister the amount of money he's getting paid. No one with a half a brain hole is going to work for that amount of money. <laughs> They're not not in that position. Yeah, They're behind bars, like not behind bars, behind glass. No one sees them. You can't, you don't know who they are. So they are able to act independent of the influence of their family. I'm not Catholic. My family is Catholic. I would have a very tough time making decisions that I felt were anti-Catholic if I was a prime minister. But if no one was going to tell my family, I have no issues doing that. I don't think religion has any place in politics. But it removes that that need, right? You don't know who I am, what I look like, where so I dress, where I come from. I am completely yeah. able. And the only brief I'm given is make the most positive decision for the most amount of people. Because you will never please everyone. But that is a brief. They get a question. How do I make <sighs> the biggest positive impact for the most amount of people? completely unrelated to my own thoughts, feelings, whatever, because I have no one who knows who I am. And then we will put that up to the committee of all of these humans who will all get their say in, including the five-year-old. She's like, I don't like pink. I think it should be blue. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sounds like a great movie. And then they just say, yep, cool, that actually works for us or yeah. no, and it's a majority vote, just majority wins. That is what it is. There's no professionals. There's no lawyers who can affect things and who not, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It sounds very chaotic, but I would love to see it. Yeah, I think it would be like a very possibly streamlined chaos, though. I do think it can be done that yeah. way. And if, like, I think people in this committee are asked simple enough questions, sometimes I think the questions they ask are too complex. Mm. Do you think this is a good idea, yes or no? Yes. You've only got two options. You've got to pick one. So, like, these people are going to pick one. Yeah. And then we figure it out. Yes, it's good. <laughs> no, it's not good. Like, the gradients of politics to me... I think is where it all gets it gets mucky. Left, right, centre, progressive. Yeah, and like social. This is a good idea, but two and a half people might be offended by it. This is a good That's idea. That's catered to them. Yeah, but do you have to get it? No, because the, the question is: Is it a good idea or if it's a bad idea? Yeah. And then you sit in your head and you go as a logical person. <sighs> yeah, actually, it's a pretty good idea. I think that the majority of the people would love it. Yeah, yeah, yes. I can talk to you for like I know a right? year straight. <laughs> so just to wrap things up, and I'd hate to cut this short but uh, we've got things i have probably a parking ticket arriving <laughs> oh i'm sorry <laughs> no, you're so um, fine. if you were to give uh, one piece of advice to the young boys and girls mm -hmm. who are thinking about even daring to do what you've done so far what, mm -hmm. would, what would you say to them mm. generally what i would i say is like when you're thinking about what i've done what is that um because if you envisage your office space and your life before you envisage your business, you're doing it wrong and this is not for you. But that does not mean that you cannot work close to it. I think my biggest piece of advice, generally speaking, is that you need to know whether or not you want to be a business owner or if you want to be in business and they are different. And owning it is a whole new set of unglamorous activities, responsibilities, shit, crap. It's not it's not the best. It isn't. But it's for a very particular type of person with a very particular want. And like when you're young and you say, I want to be in business like Brit, you know what I mean? And it's it's really cool. Like, I love that. Like the sentiment's amazing. Like, what do you like about what I do? Because I, if you're like, oh my God, it must be so great. Like she must have so much money. Like, okay, <laughs> maybe, maybe then there's something else you want to look at um, because money's not going to that's not a given. Yeah, you're not money driven, are you? No, I'm no. not personally, no. And no. I never have been. Um, and then, you know, like maybe if it's like, oh, I just, I love the way that she gets to work with the brand and all the, you know, they won't know what that is. But if they sit down and think, what do I actually like about what I think that person does? They're like, babe, amazing. You could be marketing, advertising. You could be a, an executive in that. Like the kid who really likes the money. Maybe he's actually a chief financial officer. Does he need to own the company to do that? No. Mm. So, you know, I think that people have to also put weight in jobs associated with being in business. Not The owner is not the only person of, of significant value. It's very common that people think that way. But, like, realistically speaking, 
business is fab. It's so fun. There's so many facets to it though. For the right people. Yes. And you have to be prepared to lose a lot. Like if your first thought is what will I gain by being, you know, that's so common. People are like, oh, and then I work on my own schedule and da, 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 da. Becoming your own businessman is always pushed as this like positive for you thing. It, it, it's not, it's the reverse. If you are like, what am I willing to sacrifice for business? Because I want to be in business. You're in the right place, mister. Like continue. But if you were like, what can being my own boss give me? First, like it obviously, obviously it's a thought. Can't be a, it has to be a selfless thing, not a selfish thing. Yeah, and it has to be a second or third or fourth consideration. Because, like, God, it's awesome. Like, you mean I don't not think the about success is a byproduct. It's yes, you know, you aim for it, obviously. Yeah. And to avoid disappointment, which I think happens often, it's like you, like, oh, I want to be a business owner. Then you try, and it's not the best, and you fail. And like, God, we knows we all try and fail a lot, but the ones who keep going is because we genuinely have this like particular tick. For have this business. agenda. Yeah. yeah. Which is different to some people who are like wanting to be a part of a startup or whatever. Like there are so many facets to startup. What, what's the part that gets you? Do you have to own it? Because if you don't have to own it, I would suggest you don't. I would suggest you figure out ways to get involved with those companies in a higher level or a lower level, mid-level, whatever, and, and, and focus that way. Just like really like to not build up this concept of owning a business. And I, I like, I'm often sort of put in a position where that's what people would like me to say. And they're like, oh, it must be so great. And what, you know what I mean? And I'm like, no, no. But I'm very, very, very conscious of the fact that like words have weight. And if I'm running around saying this is the coolest, best thing ever, and people give it a go, like it, it's tough. It's the toughest thing I'll ever do. Like, it's a great sign off. Well, <laughs> it's a bit I'd depressing, love- but... <laughs> It is, but but it's true, and it, and yeah. the truth, it, the truth helps. Yeah, it does help, and that's where the self awareness comes in. And I'm the biggest on the self awareness yeah. factor. Like you got to understand, you got to be aware of what it is you're getting yourself into, hmm. and what it is you want, and they have to come together. Yeah, if one is misaligned with the other, you're going down the wrong path, and you're going to be let down pretty yeah you know. and it doesn't mean you can't just like you know take a few steps back and like figure it out and yeah. you know backtrack the path like you're not it's not That's dire it. but just better way forward yeah yeah so um how do we find out more about you and your happenings and your businesses do you have like a one master web page that just flexes all your achievements no no <laughs> i'm i'm relatively like socially anonymous but yeah. like um just cuz you know the climate we live in, it's tough, like it's rough. You know, yeah. I say I like peanuts, all the allergists come up, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I sort of try and stick away from it, but I think I'm going to give it a go. Like you've sort of inspired me a bit. I think honestly, you can be a keynote speaker if, if you wanted to. Yeah, really? I just think I'm a rambling idiot, but. <laughs> no, that's fine. It's, it's relevant rambling. Yeah. Well, right that's, at least we're on task rambling, like at bare minimum, that is yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you could definitely, you definitely had my intention the whole time. You, I mean, you'd hope so yeah. for the podcast, but there's there's times where people talk because they can, mm. but there's times like yourself, you talk because you have something meaningful to say. Oh, that's that's really sweet, actually. That's like the, such a good compliment coming from someone like you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me, by the way, as well. Oh, it's it's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining me here. I'm and I mean, I'm I'm trying to grow this thing. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward to the snippets that we no. create out of this, putting it on. <laughs> and um, if you guys could please share and 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 your thoughts about the conversation, what you took out of it, somehow, somewhere, sometime, whether it's soon or years from now, going back, going, oh shit. 40, 40, uh, before 40, what do you call it? That 40 from 40 thing, the, the award that you oh, get. Oh, 30 under 30, 40 yeah. under 40, one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, you know, when you're, whether you end up like um, one of those people from Shark Tank and you started with the pretzel, now you're here sort of thing. I would love a Shark Tank spot. I have some thoughts. <laughs> I would, I would, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I've got some ideas too. But yeah, um, Brittany. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks so much for having me. All right, guys. See you later.